first video it is the second part that is the structure that is the nephron or the urinary vestibule ut ut doesn't stand for union tertiaries it is urinary vestibules okay then now the malthusian body uh, the first it is divided into three parts the nephron or the urinary vestibule is divided into three parts first is the malthusian body second is the neck and th third is the renal tubules or the renal body now the malthusian body malthusian body is itself made up of two parts that is bowman's capsule and the glomerulus glomerulus is the network of capillaries and bowman's capsule is the cup shaped body uh, which is present below the glomerulus or we may say that it is supporting the glomerulus now uh, we will make a separate video on this topic that is the malthusian body and uh, we will learn about this in detail now the second part second part is the neck neck is made up of the cuboidal cells cuboidal epithelium uh, it contains the cilia the cilia is responsible for the filtration of the filtrate that is coming from the uh, bowman's capsule now neck is the shorter part it is small and very indistinct part it is smallest and indistinct part of the uh, urinary vestibule or the nephron below this neck there is the presence of the renal tubule or the renal body the renal body constitutes of means rest all the part of the nephron is included in the renal tubules uh, renal tubule or the renal body constitute of the pct first pro pct stands for proximal convoluted tubule then loop of henle that is the u shape part then it leads to distal convoluted tubule and concentrate here that ct ct means collecting tubule this collecting tubule is the part of nephron but it is not included in the excretion process means it is it is in oh, sorry it is included in excretion process but it doesn't it don't have any active role in the excretion process it is only used as tubule for the excretion and uh, one another function is that it may absorb uh, the water whenever body needs it but apart from that it is uh, there is debate on the part of the CT in the excretion but it is considered that CT is not involved in the excretion means it is the part of excretion but it is not actively involved in the excretion this PCT the PCT is made up of numerous microvilli and the, the cilia that is ciliated um, epithelium, cuboidal epithelium, these microvilli are necessary for the absorption and this wall, wall of PCT is supplied with the numerous mitochondria. This mitochondria helps in active absorption, that is active absorption needed ATP and ATP from the mitochondria. This ATP uh, which is needed in the PCT is used for the active absorption, that is the material that is present, the useful material that are present in this a PCT absorbed by the active absorption and from this PCT PCT is about um, for PCT we can uh, write here that for for PCT that is proximal convoluted tubule its diameter is about 60 micron its diameter Its diameter is about 60 micron and uh, its length, its length is about 14 millimeter. For PCT, the diameter is about 16 micron and the length is about 14 millimeter. Uh, the entire length of the nephron is, you can recall, I have already written there that the length of the total nephron is 3 to 6 centimeter and for for the pct the length is 16 millimeter and the diameter is 60 micron and after reaching this uh, descending limb it is the loop of henle uh, starting from here till here it is the loop of henle and it has the diameter it has the less diameter than the pct and the dct its diameter ranges from for loop of henle loop of Henle for the loop of Henle the diameter is here 
it is about 15 to 30 micron and uh, its length the length of the loop of henle is about 30 to 32 millimeter its diameter is you can see that its diameter is smaller than the pct it was 60 mill micron 60 micron and it is 15 to 30 micron the reason uh, then this uh, PCT it is the descending limb of this PC uh, sorry this loop of inlay is divided into descending limb uh, u-shaped structure starting from here till here it is u-shaped structure it is descending limb and it is the ascending limb this descending limb of the loop of inlay contained a uh, squamous epithelial cell squamous epithelial cell this squamous epithelial cell um, and in this descending limb it is the permeable to water hence water can be absorbed from this region and this uh, DC, then this ascending limb this ascending limb is not permeable to the water and this ascending limb contain the cuboidal cells the main function of uh, the main function of this loop of inlay is the absorption of the water from the urine and hence the animal which are living in the desert that is camel uh, rat and all other animals contain the larger loop of henle as compared to the other mammals uh, living in the other area this loop of henle means the concentration of urine is directly proportional to the loop of henle the urine means the water is absorbed if the water is absorbed the urine become concentrated and the if the length of loop of henle is larger and larger and larger then the urine will become more concentrated concentrated and concentrated hence the concentration of urine is directly proportional to this loop length of the loop of henle and the function of pct is uh, active absorption and the absorption of the materials from the filtrate now we now we come to the uh, dct that is distal convoluted tubule distal convoluted tubule when the urine comes to this distal convoluted tubule the its diameter is about for now we will write here for dct for dct the diameter for the dct is about 60 micron means diameter increases as compared to the loop of henle and here the length the length is about 14 to 16 millimeter the length of the dct now the main function of dct is that the secretion the secretion of the unwanted waste from the blood you know that this blood capillaries this efferent arterial leads to the peritubular capillaries the function of this peritubular capillaries is that they absorb the nutrients or the uh, nutrients from this filtrate and give out the waste product into this blood via this pathway means they are attached to this um, PCT loop of Henle DCT and they are uh, constantly absorbing or giving out something in these tubules by the counter current mechanism now this these arrows indicating the passage of the filtrate this this this, this part of this uh, this part of this uh, peritubular capillary constitutes vasa recti this vasa recti is present in the uh, loop of henle region it is it is uh, mainly uh, responsible for the concentration of urine via counter current mechanism now this urine enter in the dct leads to this collecting tubule this ct means collecting tubule this collecting tubule this this is the common collecting tubule you can see these pathways there are about six to seven neurons uh, collecting to this collecting tubule means joining to this single collecting tubule this what is the function of this collecting tubule this collecting tubule is not at all involved in the filtration excretion this is only collecting tubules that are only collecting this um, filtrate or the urine from dct distal convoluted tubule to the pelvis of the urine from the uh, cortex via medulla via medullary pyramid to the pelvis and after the pelvis it leads to the ureter and 
you know rest all that the ureter leads to the urinary bladder and urine is excreted out yeah then this you i i have demarcated here that which part is present in cortex and which part is present in the medulla the part that is the bowman's capsule and is all distributes are present in the renal cortex and remaining part that is loop of henle only the loop of henle part of this nephron goes in the renal medulla you can see here i have demarcated that which part present in the cortex which part present in the medulla the renal cortex constitute of this pct dct uh, half of the collecting tubule and uh, efferent arteriole afferent arteriole uh, glomerulus and bowman's capsule that is malfusion body these all parts are present in the renal cortex and only the loop of henle and half part of the collecting tubule is present in the renal medulla there are about 1 million nephrons in our kidney it is extremely important to know that uh, the factual content that's why i am repeating it again and again that you must memorize this content at much uh, as much as possible because this content uh, we can forget and if we mention it again and again then you can remember it this 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 i, I have written that this is to when means this periodicular capillaries after absorption absorption and removal of the waste in it it becomes deoxygenated and this deoxygenated uh, blood is carried out by the renal vein and it is carried uh, it is carried by the renal vein from the kidneys now it is all about the urine uh, uriniferous tubule or the nephron it is the structural and the functional unit of the kidneys this uriniferous tubule or the nephron are the only structures which are responsible for the excretion and these are the only structural and functional unit of the kidneys functions of the dcd uh, the, the the one function we uh, take it as the excretion the, uh, sorry that is secretion sorry uh, secretion of the uh, material from these uh, tubules to this vein that is one function is of dct is that the some material is secreted by this dct into this vein means sorry that is the peritubular capillary which leads to the vein then this uh, dct the additional function of dct is that many a times asked it may be asked in the many examinations like Ned said that the it's also another function of the dct is that it maintains the hydrogen and concentration or the ph of the blood that dct uh, how the question may be arise that how uh, it is that is dct is responsible for the maintaining of the ph of the blood this dct excretes the h positive h positive ions in the urine and hence is responsible for maintaining the ph of the body hence dct is also responsible for the maintaining ph of the body then what is the function of the uniferous tubule the function of the uniferous tubule is that the first function the first function of the uniferous tubule is that it helps in the excretion and osmoregulation of our body it maintains the ph of our body it is responsible for the excretion of the toxic metabolic nitrogenous waste from our body blood supply to the kidneys uh, the question or the note sometimes the note may come in the exa examination that the blood supply to the kidneys the blood how the blood is supplied to the kidneys you know that afferent arteriole or the renal artery sorry renal artery entering in the kidney in the structure of the kidney you we all have seen that the renal artery entering the kidney and renal vein leaving the kidney that renal artery now the renal artery uh, comes with the deoxygenated blood that deoxygenated blood comes with renal artery and this renal artery divides and redivides to form the afferent arteriole these numerous afferent arteriole uh, goes to the line number of nephrons and this afferent arteriole then leads to the glomerulus then, then, then this glomerulus lead to the efferent arteriole and this efferent arteriole leads to large number of peritubular capillaries this peritubular capillaries in the region of the loop of henle is known as the vasa recti and this vasa recti is responsible for the concentration of urine this now leads to the dct and from the dct numerous the peritubular capillaries join to form the renal venules and these renal venules join to form the renal vein and this renal vein comes out of the kidney and leaves the kidney this all about the blood circulation to the kidneys